Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that connects you with the best movies on streaming. And today, we're going to be talking about all the best stuff Netflix is adding in June 2022. So if you're like most people and you've been a little bit disenchanted with Netflix lately, June is a month when they're adding a ton of stuff. They're adding a bunch of familiar favorites, really good movies that you've likely seen or heard of. We'll be talking about those up front because they add them on the first. Then we'll work through the rest of the month in chronological order, talking about all the new stuff Netflix is gonna be adding. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about over 50 titles getting added to Netflix this month, including a couple of fantastic Stephen King movies. Peaky Blinders season six, a new Chris Hemsworth Netflix original getting added later this month, as well as a new Kevin Hart action comedy, and a handful of things for the kids, including Sing 2, which is getting added later this month. At the end of this list, I'll be showing you everything leaving in June, so you can be sure to catch those titles before they're gone. This video is sponsored by Displate. I'll be telling you more about them later in the video, but for right now, let's talk about all the stuff they're gonna be adding on June 1st. Netflix is adding a bunch of comedy movies this month, including a lesser known one that I'm a big fan of, The Girl Next Door. Emile Hirsch plays a young man in this movie who lives next to a former porn star. Timothy Olfant also has a really great role in this before he was as famous as he is now. But this is a pretty solid little rated R comedy that's not a slapstick comedy. It does have quite a bit of heart to it. It's got a pretty decent story, much better than you would expect given the synopsis. This has become somewhat of a cult classic because it's got some great moments in it and it goes in some directions that you wouldn't expect, making it one of my top picks for the month. They're also gonna be adding Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy. Come get a taste. The original Dumb and Dumber. This health yeah, yeah. Uh. That was good. They're also going to be adding Vegas Vacation and Christmas Vacation. I actually think Vegas Vacation is highly underrated. I think it's much better than European Vacation, making it the third best vacation movie. And then the best one is Christmas Vacation. I watch this movie every single year, but you can guarantee I'm not going to be watching it in June or July. If you need any help, uh, give me a holler. I'll be upstairs to sleep. And then finally for comedy, they're gonna be adding Mr. Bean's Holiday. I'm more partial to the Mr. Bean show than the movies, but I will say that Rowan Atkinson is in another Netflix original comedy coming out later this month that looks really funny. We'll talk about that in just a minute. For action fans, my underrated pick of the month is Eraser starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. Obviously, this is not a hidden gem movie, but I do consider it to be highly underrated. This movie's very self-aware. It's a little tongue-in-cheek. It mocks action movies in a fun way. There's some wild, over-the-top stuff in this movie, but it's always done sort of with a sense of fun. By no means is this an action comedy, but it is one of the more fun, all-out action movies that Arnold Schwarzenegger ever did. Never takes itself quite too seriously and is just full of some really rad moments. Leon the Professional would be maybe the best action movie getting added this month. I mean, you wanna talk about a movie that would not be made today, and not just because Gary Oldman is playing one of his most menacing villains. I mean, he's one of the most legendary villain actors of all time, and this is one of his best bad guys. But the relationship between Natalie Portman's 14-year-old character and this middle-aged hitman who appears to be on the spectrum does seem inappropriate to say the least. However, this is just a beautifully done movie. It's one of Luke Besson's absolute best. They're also gonna be adding a mixed bag of Mission Impossible movies, but just as a refresher, the original Mission Impossible was released all the way back in 1996 and was actually directed by Brian De Palma, who's famous for directing movies like Scarface. So the original one feels the most like a classic, or I guess I should say traditional movie. It's just got some big, wild set pieces in it. As the series went on, things got bigger and wilder. And then I actually think Ghost Protocol is the best, or at least it's my favorite. This one was directed by Brad Bird, who also did some Pixar movies like The Incredibles. He has a great eye for action. I also think this movie has one of the best stunts 
in Mission Impossible history, and there are some fantastic stunts in this franchise. I also think Mission Impossible 4 Ghost Protocol is the most fun out of the entire series. They're also going to be adding The Amazing Spider-Man, which is one of my least favorite Spider-Man movies, but it's not terrible. But before moving on with the rest of the movies on this list, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Displate. Check out these cool metal posters I just got from Displate. That's right, they're printed on metal and they're printed when you order them. Displate has over a million designs from over 40,000 different artists in a wide range of styles. Movie posters, games, anime, animals, food, pop culture. I mean, anything you can imagine that you're into, Displate probably has some designs for you. I mean, these things look so much better than a typical poster, but what I really loved about my display collection is how easy it was to hang. I mean, literally, it took me longer to set up the camera and lights than it did to hang four large posters. Each poster comes with a really easy hanging system. You put this sticker on the wall that's not gonna damage the paint. Then they give you a magnet that then sticks to that sticker and you can mount the metal poster. And what's great about that is not only is there no tools, you don't damage the wall, but you can adjust and move these things around and swap them. I rearranged mine in moments after hanging them and it was one of the coolest, easiest setups I've ever done and I've hung a lot of art in my house. And right now when my viewers use the link in the video description down below, they're gonna save 25% off their order when they buy one or two posters. And then if you buy three or more, you'll save 29% off your entire order. I'm telling you, these things were actually fun to hang on my wall and they're gonna look better than any posters you've got hanging up in your place right now. Go to the link in the description to get that discount. Start browsing from over a million designs. I'm telling you, they've got a ton of cool stuff over there. But speaking of cool stuff, Let's go ahead and move on with the rest of everything getting added to Netflix in June. We Are Marshall is about the Marshall University football team in the aftermath of a plane crash that claimed the lives of several people on the team. This stars Matthew McConaughey, Matthew Fox, Anthony Mackie, and a handful of other people you're gonna recognize, but even though this is what you would call a crowd pleaser, it's still an excellent film. Steel Magnolias is an absolute classic that gets added. I don't know that I've ever seen it available on Netflix. Who knows, maybe I missed it, but this is one of the best and most acclaimed chick flicks of all time. I say chick flicks with air quotes. If you traditionally like those types of movies and somehow you've never seen Steel Magnolias, do yourself a favor, it's gonna be your new favorite movie. They're also gonna be adding The Departed and The Fighter, two excellent dramas, top-notch stuff, and they both happen to feature Mark Wahlberg and are two of the better movies he's ever starred in. The Hurt Locker with Jeremy Renner is another modern classic. It's been quite a while since I've seen this movie, but it is excellent, filled with a lot of really great scenes that you probably have forgotten about. And then for some historical dramas, they're gonna be adding Titanic, back to Netflix, but it has been on within the last year or so. I am telling you though, if it's been a while since you've seen Titanic, it is still a marvel of filmmaking. One that is just as epic, but less of a marvel of filmmaking is Troy. There are great moments in this. I just don't necessarily consider this to be a great movie overall. On June 3rd, they're gonna be adding Floor is Lava season two. I love watching this show with my kids and the new season looks like it's got even bigger sets and should be even more fun to watch. They're also gonna be adding a new Netflix original action movie from Australia called Interceptor. This is a female-led action movie that takes place on an oil rig, and I gotta be honest, this looks pretty badass. For something getting added early in the month, this is definitely on my watch list. Bill Burr is one of my favorite stand-up comedians, and on the 6th, he's adding a new series called Friends Who Kill. This will be a stand-up series featuring some of his favorite comedians, so yet another thing that's gonna be on my watch list for early June. On the 8th, they add one of the most interesting Adam Sandler projects since Uncut Gems. It's called Hustle. In this movie, Movie, he plays a washed up basketball scout that finds a player in Spain and wants to bring him to the NBA. Ben Foster also stars in this, so yeah, it's shaping up to be one of the more interesting things Adam Sandler's done in quite a few years. And then a new Netflix docu-series, Keep Sweet, Pray and Obey, is about some polygamist, and it looks like it goes into some dark directions. I mean, you're talking about some people who have like the most wives out of anyone on the planet. So yeah, it looks like it goes into some grim directions. On June 10th, they're adding a whole bunch of stuff, including a new Netflix original movie for the kids that wins best title of this particular video. 
Chicken Hair and the Hamster of Darkness. This does look like a fun watch for the kids. One that's definitely not for kids though is Dirty Daddy, the Bob Saget tribute. If you didn't know, Bob Saget died just a few months ago, so it'll be interesting to see what Netflix has to present at this point. First Kill is a new vampire series. If you've been into any of the vampire series over the last few years, Vampire Diaries or the originals, then I think First Kill is gonna be right up your alley. They're also gonna be adding Vice, the movie where Christian Bale plays Dick Cheney. He did an amazing job embodying Dick Cheney and all his mannerisms and everything in this movie. And for that matter, so did Sam Rockwell playing George W. Bush. They're adding Top Gear seasons 27 and 28. Used to be a big fan of the show. I've kind of fallen off. Maybe I'll get back into it. And then they're going to be adding Peaky Blinders season six. If you've been highly anticipating that, it got delayed because of COVID. Like everything else, it's going to be here on the 10th. Now jumping to the 14th, they're adding another Netflix documentary called Halftime. This is about everything that goes into the Super Bowl halftime show. And they're following Jennifer Lopez in this documentary. I mean, if I'm going to watch a documentary about the Super Bowl halftime show, I can't think of somebody I'd rather follow than Jennifer Lopez. Longtime subscribers know I often recommend Netflix crime dramas from Spain. They're adding a new one from Spain this month called Centauro. This is about a street racer that gets caught up in a world of crime and drugs, and it actually looks pretty cool. It's another one that I'll definitely be putting on my watch list for June. Then they're gonna be adding a Melissa McCarthy series called God's Favorite Idiot, where her husband actually plays in this, and he's a pretty funny guy, but I have not been a fan of any of the Melissa McCarthy Netflix original content. I love her in movies, I think she's fantastic. I just haven't really enjoyed anything she's done, again, as a Netflix original. Iron Chef returns to your homes with Quest for an Iron Legend. Out and Brown and some familiar faces are involved in this. It looks epic. They got a new set. I used to love watching this show. Hopefully, they've been able to capture the magic that the original series had. On the 16th, they're adding Won't You Be My Neighbor, which is not the Mr. Rogers movie starring Tom Hanks. It's the documentary done on Mr. Rogers, and it is an amazing documentary. It's really fantastic. If you were just slightly a fan of Mr. Rogers as a kid, you should definitely watch this documentary. It's got a lot of information, and his story is not just good, it is a really good feel documentary, which there are not many of those. And then if they haven't added enough comedy for you in June, they're adding Snoop Dogg's f***ing around comedy special. I do not yet know what comedians we're gonna get to see on some of these specials, but Snoop Dogg's got a pretty good sense of humor. Hopefully he picks some good comedians. Then on the 17th, they add a new Chris Hemsworth Netflix original movie that also stars Miles Teller and was actually directed by the same director that just did Top Gun Maverick. It's called Spiderhead. This is a science fiction movie that takes place in the near future where a group of prisoners are given the opportunity to take part in a science experiment. They're given drugs to induce feelings of love. And then as you might expect with a sci-fi movie, things do not go as planned. This definitely looks interesting. It does not look like an all out action movie or anything, but it does look like a pretty cool Netflix original sci-fi movie. Now I did say in a recent video that Netflix's horror movie bench is pretty thin and I do agree with that statement, but they you get one more player added to the roster this month with Pennywise. Here, take it. They're gonna be adding the 2017 It. I would imagine most people interested have seen this by now because it was such a hit movie. But if you somehow have not seen it, this is gonna be one of the best horror movies added to Netflix in months. It really is fantastic. They did a great job with the production. It's a good representation of Stephen King's work. It's incredibly creepy, and it gets really intense at times. I do remember liking the original miniseries that aired on TV back in the day, particularly the first one, and this movie is kind of a nice companion to that. It's different in a lot of ways and more modern, but in a good way. On the 20th, they're gonna be adding an excellent drama movie called Philomena. This stars Dame Judi Dench and Steve Coogan. Steve Coogan actually wrote this movie, so if you're a fan of his, this is, again, really excellent. It's got some levity and some comedy to it, but it is a pretty serious drama about a woman searching for her long-lost son who was taken from her decades ago when she became pregnant and was forced to live in a convent. I promise you, even if that synopsis sounds a little too dry for you, this is a really just top-notch movie. Something very interesting getting added for the kids 
on the 21st is All That, seasons two and three. This was a sketch comedy show that aired on Nickelodeon in the 90s when I was a kid. It's one of the first sketch comedy shows I ever watched. It was hilarious when I was a kid. We will see if my kids and other kids in modern day get a lot of the jokes. I'll definitely put at least one episode on for the kids to see if I can get them laughing. And on a similar note, they're gonna be adding Keenan and Kel, season one and two. Similar cast members, same type of humor, except it's a little bit more sitcom-y. Stephen King hits Netflix again with the 2007 The Mist. Now this is one that had mixed reviews, had mixed reception from the audience. I get it, I understand it. However, this is directed by Frank Darabont who did The Shawshank Redemption and was responsible for starting The Walking Dead and he did an excellent job with this movie. Not only is the mystery and the world building and the environment that you end up in all very well produced, but I think he adapted Stephen King's work Work pretty well here. It is condensed, it's compressed into a two hour movie. You do miss some things, as you always do. However, if you're a fan of Stephen King's work, The Mist is definitely worth either watching or re-watching. They're also gonna be adding the Umbrella Academy season three. The trailer looks absolutely sick, but I didn't quite finish season one, and so I'm way behind, and I'll be honest, I have very little desire to keep up with this show. They're also gonna be adding Sing 2 for the kids. This had been in theaters for months. It's already coming to Netflix. I just recently watched it with my kids and while they did love it, I thought it was about as good as the original, maybe not quite as good, but still it's a nice watch with a lot of really good music in it. I told you they were adding a lot of stuff this month. Then on the 23rd, more comedy with Best of the Fest. If you don't know, Netflix just recently had a huge comedy special called Netflix is a Joke. I honestly wish they had like live streamed it or something, let us all be part of the festival at home, but hopefully, here, they picked some of the better sets. On the 24th, they add a new Kevin Hart action comedy, The Man from Toronto. Not only does Kevin Hart look funny, as usual, in this movie, but you get Woody Harrelson playing like a vicious mercenary type character. I've never seen the two of those together. I imagine they're gonna have some chemistry. Even if this doesn't end up being like a good movie that could have done well in theaters, I think as a Netflix original, it's gonna be a funny watch. And then speaking of funny watches, Rowan Atkinson has a new series called Man vs. Bee. He's most famous for his Mr. Bean character, but he has had other characters over the years like Johnny English that have been hits. But Man vs. Bee looks like his classic physical comedy. I honestly cannot wait to watch this one with my kids. I loved watching Mr. Bean when I was younger and hopefully this is nearly as funny. There's a new Money Heist series from Korea getting added. If you were a fan of the original Money Heist and you managed to keep up with all of its seasons and its intense storyline, you're definitely gonna wanna at least preview the Korean version. Could shape up to be almost as good. Grey's Anatomy season 18, if you're still watching that show, they're adding that on the 25th. And then on the 29th, they're adding Pirate Gold of Adak Island. This looks like a series that's gonna be great for people who love things on the Discovery Channel. And the History Channel, you know, shows like Ice Road Truckers and Gold Rush, shows like that, if you were into that and maybe you've cut the cord like most of us, I think this is gonna maybe scratch that cable TV itch for you. Now, here is everything leaving in the month of June. If you're new to the channel, welcome, but please note, the date listed is the date that it is gone, which means you cannot watch any of these titles on the date shown. You need to catch it the day prior at the latest. If you want more movie recommendations, be sure to go over to my site, darrenvandam.com. There's some recommendations right there on the homepage, as well as access to all my back catalog episodes. And thanks to Displate for sponsoring this episode. Be sure to go check out that link and get that discount if you're interested in those metal posters. I'm telling you, they are really cool. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this Netflix episode, and you will see me on the next one.